Greetings esteemed viewers, we are delighted to have your company on Vegetarian Elite. This week we are talking with three vegan government members from the United Kingdom, Ms Kerry McCarthy, Mr Varenda Sharma and Mr Adrian Ramsey, who are all contributing into uplifting the planet to a brighter, kinder new era. Ms Kerry McCarthy has served as Labour Member of Parliament for Bristol East since 2005. Mr Sharma has been a Labour Member of Parliament for Ealing Southall since 2007 and Mr Ramsey is the Deputy Leader of the Green Party in England and Wales. Allow us to first introduce MP McCarthy. I've been vegan since 1992, um, it was a New Year's resolution that I actually managed to keep and I've been vegetarian for about 30 years as well. MP McCarthy has been active in the Labour Party since the early 1990s. Following her election to Parliament in 2005, she has sat on a number of committees, including ones for the Finance Bill, UK Borders Bill and Mental Health Bill. More recently, in 2010, she was appointed to the Shadow Cabinet and was made Temporary Shadow Junior Minister in the Department of Work and Pensions and has served as the Shadow Junior Minister in the Treasury. Currently, MP McCarthy holds the title of Shadow Economic Secretary. In November 2010, MP McCarthy was invited by the World Preservation Foundation and Dodds as one of the distinguished speakers in the Climate Conference. Leaders Preserving Our Future, Pace and Priorities on Climate Change, held at the Central Hall, Westminster in London, United Kingdom. So it took me a few years before I actually started raising the issue in Parliament and in the end, after a few years of waiting for someone else to do it, I had a Westminster Hall debate on the impact of um, livestock, on the environmental impact of the livestock sector. The fact that it takes eight kilograms of grain to produce one kilogram of beef, the amount of water um, consumption that is, is used in the livestock sector, deforestation, um, greenhouse gases, uh, methane, um, and all, all those issues. Invited as the special guest of honour for the same conference, Supreme Master Ching Hai shared encouragement via video message urging leaders and co-citizens alike to make courageous earth-saving changes. Now some of us might question, can our world really eliminate the global meat industry and become all vegan? The fact tell us yes we can. And our humanity's survival instinct tells us we must. It was an issue that I've raised in Parliament before. I did um, an adjournment debate a few years ago. The greenhouse gas you know, and the methane emissions from cattle, um, for example, is something that crops up every now and again, but then it goes away. And the focus has all been on CO2 and people's carbon footprints. People shouldn't just be lobbying their MPs about aviation and things like that. They should also be lobbying them about the livestock sector. I think that's really important. We've got to get it on the mainstream political agenda and that's starting to happen because people are starting to talk about it and various politicians have brought forward their own bits of legislation but it needs to be on the agenda definitely within the European Union because they are so powerful when it comes to world agriculture um, and the fact that you've got people like Bill Clinton that are suddenly become a vegan, people like that signing up and taking the lead is really important and um, you know, hopefully they, they can raise the profile of the issue, but we do need to have it taken a lot more seriously. MP McCarthy is convinced that social problems, including wars, could be reduced by increasing the compassion and respect for animals through laws and policies. Somebody once said that society should be judged by how it treats its animals, and I think if people can move towards, you know, a more compassionate lifestyle, but also being far more aware of the resources they're consuming, the way they're treating the planet, the way they're treating other people and other living beings, you know, that has got to be of benefit. And it's, it's just partly people being more aware of the impact their own behaviour has. And I think that getting across to people that what they do does make a difference, even though they're one little voice. If you add all those voices together, you can really bring about quite dramatic social change. It's, it's really important.
Hi, I'm Virinder Sharma, Member of Parliament for Ealing South Hall, United Kingdom. You are watching Supreme Master Television. Be wedge, go green to save the planet. MP Virendra Sharma served as a local councillor in the London Borough of Ealing from 1982 to 2010 and was also a mayor for part of his time as councillor. In 2007, Mr Sharma was elected as MP in Ealing South Hall and a year later was given the role of Parliamentary Private Secretary to the Minister of State at the Treasury and Home Office. He has been elected as a member of the Parliamentary Select Committees on Health, Human Rights and International Development. As a valued representative of the British Government, Mr Sharma has made official overseas visits as a Member of Parliament to Cyprus, Kenya, India and Mauritius. MP Sharma, a vegan himself, believes that a plant-based diet helps promote good health. Uh, there is a scientific proof uh, all the health uh, experts or the specialists, uh, all the campaigning bodies uh, also indicates that it is true that vegan can help uh, in reducing diseases. Uh, I, I do firmly believe in that and I support that. With global warming gripping the planet, which is on the brink of disaster, MP Sharma highlights the vegan solution in lessening greenhouse gases. Uh, we can see recent changes in uh, southeastern uh, countries. Yes. Uh, the weather change, uh, the effects of the floods, uh, many other areas which everybody has uh, believed and seen it. And I believe, and many people support that idea, that yes, the vegetarianism and the approaches in uh, this area can help in reducing those climate changes. Bringing this idea into the forefront, right. where everybody agrees in principle that we have to do something, accepting it, there is a threat coming, and we all have to work together on that. And I believe, and I said it at many conferences, that is the most important thing, rather than people saying it and doing nothing. Additionally, MP Sharma is conscious about the environment and endeavours to reduce our carbon and water footprint. Statistics document that meat production uses at least 300% more water than growing vegetables. Yes, eating less meat yes. will help in reducing the carbon footprints. Reducing use of water and other areas will help. Uh, I do, but at the same time, it's a campaigning uh, matter which we need to go out in public, raising the awareness, yes. making sure that people participate in it and becomes role models in that. To the dismay of many citizens who are speaking out against the cruelty involved in the fox hunt, the British government is actually considering its reintroduction. MP Sharma, on the other hand, is setting up an initiative in an effort to stop this. He is an excellent example of compassion and respect for all life. Killing, fox hunting, uh, hunting in general, uh, we oppose it. Uh, I'm part of the uh, animal welfare organization, I do not support the killing uh, uh, of any birds and uh, not only the fox hunting yes. alone. Uh, and I will carry on fighting for that. Uh, cruelty in yes. the society we oppose Excellent. and I'm part of that group which opposes that. So I will be certainly encouraging my constituents to play their part for the future environment in this country and in the world. Another kind-hearted British government member who is concerned about the future of our world is Mr Adrian Ramsay, Deputy Leader of the Green Party in England and Wales. Born and raised in the UK, Mr Ramsay has been actively campaigning in local elections for the Green Party since the age of 16. 
He has taken national roles within the Green Party, such as being spokesperson for planning and economic development and taking part in debates about youth issues on the party's behalf. Mr Ramsey also believes that immediate action is needed to halt the dire impact of climate change. It's clear that climate change is a massively urgent issue. Scientists from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change clearly agree that we've got to take urgent action over the next few years to reduce carbon emissions uh, by a substantial amount to show that we can avoid uh, going over the tipping point of the two degree rise in global uh, temperatures. That's what we've got to avoid. Deputy Leader Ramsey points out why the shift away from animal agriculture is the most effective solution to preserving our environment and ultimately saving our planet. Moving away from factory farming would really help us to tackle climate change and there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, one of them is the deforestation that's happening in so many parts of the world which is affecting indigenous communities and wildlife but it's certainly increasing climate change as well and one of the main reasons for deforestation is clearing land for intensive rearing of animals or, or for growing food to feed to those animals when we know that less intensive forms of farming and particularly crop production is a far more efficient way of feeding people. Of course the emissions uh, from uh, intensive farming including methane emissions are very substantial and have a real effect uh, on the changes in the environment that we're seeing. Sharing MP McCarthy and MP Sharma's viewpoints, Mr Ramsey is also convinced that the promotion of an organic, locally produced, plant-based diet leads to healthy lifestyles and a sustainable planet. He believes that subsidies for farmers should support these green options. We want to make it a lot easier for people to, to make environmentally friendly and healthy choices in diet and that includes having vegetarian and vegan options more readily available in schools and in hospitals for example. It includes ensuring that the healthy options are, are cheaper options and yes of course having information about uh, what foods are healthier and, and greener in terms of local production, in terms of reducing the amount of meat and dairy that we're consuming. We want to make it easier for farmers to go organic and uh, to grow things more locally and on a, a small scale wildlife friendly way that preserves biodiversity and we think that the, um, the subsidies that go to farmers should be focused around in achieving these objectives, making it easier uh, for farmers to, to do the green thing. The Green Party wants to promote organic farming both in the UK and around the world and there are good reasons for that in terms of protecting the environment, in terms of protecting the health of both the workers and the people consuming the foods and that's a really important part we think of local uh, agricultural policy but also of trade policy around the world. Mr Ramsey has succeeded in making Norwich a fair trade city and is also vocal about opposing genetically modified or GM products. We need to ensure that the world trade rules are about creating fair trade, that it's not the case that the big companies have all the power to drive down uh, welfare standards for animals, uh, labour rights standards for the people working in, in farms or uh, in factories. We've got to ensure that fair trade is the norm, that governments are able to stand up for high principles in our trade system. And for me that means ensuring that we don't have GM, it means ensuring that we always have fair trade rather than slave labour and it means high levels of animal welfare and environmental standards and the Greens are saying that fair trade rather than free trade is the priority. Mr Ramsey and his government colleagues have hopeful visions of creating a more benevolent, greener and overall better society. If we've got better public transport, that will improve people's lives as well as reducing carbon emissions. If we're creating jobs in areas like renewable energy and home insulation, that will help save people money on their fuel bills and keep homes warm, as well as tackling climate change. If we have local food supplies, that will keep people in work. It will ensure that we have food security for the future rather than relying on huge imports. And it will reduce carbon emissions as well. We want it to be easier for people to use public transport by reducing the prices. We want it to be easier for people to buy local produce by having more farmers markets and supporting local producers. And we want it to be easier for people to recycle by having better recycling facilities. So there's lots of things we want to do to help people have a green lifestyle and through that to raise the profile of the issues, of the problems and of the potential solutions. Nearing the conclusion of our interview, Deputy Leader Ramsey offered his encouraging well wishes. Supreme Master Television, I really appreciate the work that you're doing and I hope the next years are just as successful in raising awareness of the important issues around the world of improving conditions for people, for animals and for the environment.
Likewise, we wish to sincerely thank Mr Adrian Ramsey, Mr Virandra Sharma and Ms Kerry McCarthy for their relentless compassion and leadership for human health, animal welfare and a sustainable global society. We look forward to the day when their noble ideals will be realised. Learn more and contact Member of Parliament Kerry McCarthy at www.kerrymccarthymp.org. For more information on Member of Parliament Varendra Sharma, please visit www.varendrasharma.com. Green Party Deputy Leader Adrian Ramsey can be found at www.adrianramsey.org.uk. Thank you for joining us today on Vegetarian Elite. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Between Master and Disciples. Blessed be our wise and courageous leaders who work diligently to uphold peace and integrity. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VE.